This is by far the biggest plant I have ever grown. In today's video we're going to look at this plant from being a tiny little cutting all the way to being this monster of a plant and we're getting on top of it because it has reached the top of its moss pile yet again so it's time for a big chop. Hey everybody and welcome back to my YouTube channel. I don't even know if you can see this whole plant. It is quite large. It is my Epipremnum penatum Cebu Blue, but it has lost all of the Cebu Blue part. Um, looks very similar to just a normal Epipremnum penatum right now, but you can still see with some of the more juvenile leaves down here that they are more bluish. Uh, this is a different cutting. There's two cuttings on here. Uh, this one has obviously matured quite a bit and as part of that maturing it is losing that silver bluish tinge. Right? These leaves are absolutely massive. I mean you can see them compared to my face but because they're so high up up there I don't really get to appreciate them. So besides the fact that I have to get on top of it because of it uh, because I reached the top of its moss pile sometimes I like to also chop these plants and bring them down to eye height again so I can actually appreciate them properly. Now, before we get on top of this plant, let me give you a little bit of background on this plant and I put in some photos uh, on the side. So I got this plant as a cutting in March 21. It is March 24 right now, so this plant is three years old and you see in that box those two leaves in there next to the Maranta, that was this cutting. By March 22, you can see that this plant has certainly grown up its moss pollen. and you can really see a decent change in leaf size as well as uh, like fenestrations. Uh, there's a word for it, which I don't remember right now. But you can really see it changing in leaf shape and getting these fenestrations. And then by March 23, this plant was actually so large that I decided to put it in my garden. Now that was at my old place and my old place was extremely windy. It was so windy that these large leaves were literally just thrown around like this non-stop every day. <laughs> um, now a little bit of wind like this doesn't harm them every now and then but that was just a little too much for its liking. So as a result of that I got a lot of damage specifically to the upper leaves because obviously they're the ones that are exposed to the wind the most. So what I did after that winter outside at the beginning of spring 23 I cut this stem over here. So I, with that cut, I cut off all of the uh, like winter growth um, as well as all of the damage that occurred as part of um, it being grown in such windy conditions. From there, it then reshot and all of these nice leaves you see here, all of these, they were all grown in this new house over here over the last three months. So a very fast grower, very happy with the conditions I got to offer it over here. Alrighty, so now that we know a little bit about the history of this plant, let's get on top of it. Now, you guys all know my chop and extend processes and this is exactly what we're going to follow today. The extension is here, so moss pole 2, moss pole 1, moss pole 2, so I'm going to chop in between the extension. Now, I usually like to chop the stem a little bit in advance so that it has a little bit more time to dry out but we're just gonna have to do that today so I just cut the stems first well just for you to see I chopped the stems over here and then I'm gonna chop the cable ties that connect the two poles I will also cut the cable ties that connect the pole to the garden stake and now I'm gonna see What's holding it back? One more cable tie over here that I missed. That's it. All right, I'm actually surprised. Sometimes there's a lot of big roots going from the top into the bottom. Clearly not in this instance, which is even more of a surprise that it grows that large then. All righty, we park the bottom on the side Actually, no, we park this over here for now. I mean, look how beautiful this is. Now we can finally properly see it. I can move this around now. Happy days. You can see 
just gonna let this cut colors over. I'm gonna have a look at this. This will go into Tim's garden, I think. I think that would be good. Leaves go yellow all the time. If, as long as it's a leaf towards the bottom of the pole, ideally the lightest leaf, um, I'm not concerned. Now this was actually the second oldest leaf, but I think this one is also so ugly, I might as well just cut this too. Alrighty, I'm just gonna... Oh my god, take this back because I need that for the extension later. And this, and look how root bound that is as well. Look at the roots sticking out over here. Now I'm gonna just keep this on the side and um, I'll bring this over to Tim's place eventually because he is, we're redoing his garden. And I think I said that in almost every video, so you're probably aware by now. But anyway, we're redoing his garden and this is one of the many propagations that I'm going to put in his garden. I'm determined to fill that space without having to buy anything, hopefully. Now, there isn't all too much that we can get done in the meantime, but this plant used to be behind the couch over there. Let me show you. Oh, you can see it. It was behind this lounge over here because, well, it was nice and tall, so it kind of filling that space. Now that it is less tall, I'm inclined to not put it back there. <laughs> Sorry, this is just me killing time to give the cut a bit of time to colors over, thinking I might pop that behind the couch over there instead. Sweet. Love it. All right. I will be back with you in about maybe 30 minutes. Yeah, let's do that. All righty. And we're back and it's getting sunnier and hotter. But there should be enough time for this plant to have dried out. So for the rest to work, we need the garden stake that we took out of the original pole, a pole extension, a new pot, and a tub of aeroid mix. I'm going to try and remove a little bit of moss from the bottom part of this pole. That way this moss is not down in the pot. The moss has very high water retention, so potentially a little bit too much water retention for my liking. But at the same time, there are a lot of roots in here. Have a look at this. See all of these roots that are within the moss pile? Well, those are the roots that keep the plant going. And the do this thing where they don't just root into the moss pile at the node. Actually, throughout the entire stem, this plant is growing roots and rooting into the moss pile. Uh, can you see this? Here, yes. So, it is kind of hard for me to get any moss out of there because it's so full of roots. So in this instance, I think I do more damage than good if I continue with this, so I don't do it. But if you're able to easily flake out some of the moss at the bottom, that would be my preference to reduce the water retention of the medium in the pot. But not today. So what we're going to do is we're just going to take the plant and we just pot it up and to the very bottom of the pot, really important for stability. And then we're just going to top it up with my chunky airway mix. Alrighty. Next up, we're going to get the garden stake Whoop. and fit that back into the pot and connect it all via cable ties that uh, I can't find. Beauty, just two cable ties at the bottom over here. If you have a tiny gap at the top of the moss pole over here, now it's the time to fill it with some extra moss. Take a new moss pole this one, I have some plastic incorporated into the grid mesh 
so that it can retain moisture better. Okay, now over here I need to be careful that I don't harm the stem and that's why it's that's why it's best to do these chopping extents before the plant grows over the actual moss pole because this plant would have grown backwards now so it would have kind of covered the pole in itself which is not what I want. Uh, cable tied that to it as well here comes the sun and then I also take a few cable ties and connect the two poles together and I use this chopstick to guide the cable tie to where I want it to go right lastly this stem needs to be maneuvered back huh? now it's not going to stay there by itself so I'm going to build a larger cable tie out of these cable ties because I never have large cable ties and I'm going to try and cable this, tie this to the pole just temporarily once the plant has grown roots into the pole I don't need this step anymore Alright, now I can move this over. Alrighty, number one, and I might just do another one further up. Now these have to be temporary because they're gonna stop the plant from really growing to its full potential if I make them too tight, you know. Alrighty, so I just really hope that future Jan isn't going to forget about these cable ties so that the cable ties don't like suffocate the plant. It's just temporarily. There you go, it's good enough. Now I cut all the cable ties. And here we are, huh? How does it look? Probably not super stable. I don't know. Hopefully. Hopefully, okay, stable. Alright, now of course these leaves at the bottom are going to have a bit of a hard time because they're really low to the ground, but that's okay. I'm really focused on these leaves at the top and I want those to continuously grow. So, I think that was a success. I'm going to put this plant there and then I'm going to give it some water. But you don't need to watch me water this. Alrighty, and that's it. So it's actually quite easy if you're organized and if you have all of the things handy. Um, that's why I like to make moss poles in bulk in advance so that when it's time to do these sort of things it doesn't actually take me all too long. And luckily I was able to do it outside so most of the mess is contained out here. I'll wrap it up. Thank you so much for watching. Like, subscribe and leave a nice comment and I'll see you next time. Bye!